Are you wanting to lose weight without counting calories? Then stay tuned for these five strategies plus a bonus at the end that you can do right now. Strategy number one, make sure that you have whole foods. Whole foods are gonna be much more satiating. They're gonna keep you full for a longer period of time. They're also gonna be providing the body with the nutrients that it needs in order to have all the metabolic processes occurring as optimally as possible in the body. If there's a deficiency in any one of those, or especially multiple, then the body's gonna be seeking out more food to accomplish that, that goal of basically getting what it needs, right? And so if you have very processed food coming in, low in nutrients, high in calories, it's you're getting double whammy because you're getting excess calories coming in and your body's still gonna be looking for those nutrients. So make sure you have whole foods. It's gonna be your lean proteins, your complex carbohydrates, your veggies, your healthy fats, and basically, if you can pick it, you can pluck it, or it's on the perimeter of the grocery aisle, or the grocery store rather, then you're in a good spot. Strategy number two, be mindful about your eating habits. Are you eating because you're actually hungry, or are you eating because of appetite? Are you bored? Is it just something to kill time? Uh, is it any one of those things, or is your stomach actually rumbling? And if it is, are you eating like very frequently that you're you're constantly hungry and you're giving your body that message that like, okay, it's been an hour and a half, I need to eat something again. You eat, another hour and a half goes by. If you're grazing all day, you look at animals that graze, you got like cattle, they're eating all day long and they are large. You look at something like a lion, it goes and it does one kill and it eats a ton and then it stops. And that long period of time allows for that digestion process to happen and it allows for those hunger cues to be on point. So I'm not saying eat one meal a day, although that is something that you could do. What I'm saying is be mindful of your eating. Don't eat because you're bored or because it's there in front of you. Be conscious of what is hunger and what is appetite. On to the next one. Strategy number three, portion control. If you have a plate in front of you, a big plate, and that thing is full, you're more likely to eat the majority of the food on that plate. If you have a small plate, you're more likely to eat everything on that plate for sure. And so make sure that you control your portion sizes. Go with a smaller plate if possible. Don't fill the whole plate up. If you are filling the whole plate up, fill the majority of it up with something such as vegetables or your lean proteins. Something that's gonna fill you up, but not necessarily fill up the bank in regard to your calories. So that's one strategy that you can do. And another way is just go until you're about 80% full. If you eat to about 80% full, you should feel pretty good. You're not overly you know, weighed down, so to speak. And you're not bloated. You, you just don't feel stuffed, right? And so that's a good kind of cutoff point. If you feel about 75, 80% full, go ahead and put the plate to the side and you're good for the next four, six plus hours. Number four, stay hydrated. A lot of times our body has trouble telling if we have hunger that we are experiencing and we need to eat something, or if we're dehydrated and we just need to have a little bit more water. Sometimes it's both, but oftentimes, especially nowadays with you know kind of this go, go, go uh, lifestyle that a lot of people live, we're often at a mild or even a good amount of dehydration. So having some water prior to your meal, or just in general, if you're hungry, might help you out. If you're having water uh, when you get that hunger signal and it goes away, then you're actually dehydrated and you weren't hungry. Uh, if you're having it prior to a meal, it should help to fill up the stomach a little bit. And if there is some dehydration, that it's not gonna make you overeat because your body will search out water through your food. So that is another thing that can occur as well. So if you're having that water coming in, it should help to curb your appetite both in that moment and again if you are uh, having a meal. So make sure you're staying hydrated. I usually recommend at a bare bones minimum, half of your body weight in ounces throughout the course of the day. Ideally, closer to about 0.75 times your body weight throughout the course of the day. If it's hot outside, it's the summertime, you're extremely active, a heavy sweater, then go and maybe even have upwards of your body weight in ounces throughout the course of the day. You don't really wanna have it in a short period of time, have it spread out and that way your body can make the most use of its uh, ability to absorb it. The other thing you wanna have in there is your electrolytes. So your 
magnesium, your sodium, your potassium, and your calcium. So those are kind of the two sides of the coin when it comes to being hydrated, is having enough of your electrolytes and your water. One more, and then we got a bonus. Okay, number five, got to move. Move that body, and body in motion will stay in motion. So go out and exercise, go for a run, go for a jog, expend calories, and train your body to use them and be more efficient with the calories that you bring in. If, we, if you're sedentary, body doesn't have a whole lot of uh, motivation, so to speak, or really stimulus to do anything with those calories that are coming in. If you have protein coming in, there's not a whole lot of muscle mass that needs to be repaired. And if you're not really doing a whole lot to break down the other tissue, especially if you're young, you really don't have a whole lot of repair going on. So you really don't need a whole lot of protein. protein. So that's going to increase uh, your calories there because there's not a high demand for it. Your fats, once your hormones are taken care of, everything else is very easy to store as body fat. And then for carbohydrates, especially if they're processed, if you don't have a lot of muscle tissue, then there's really nowhere for the body to absorb that other than such as the liver. So once you've, you've maxed out what your liver, what your liver needs and you max out what you need for your day to day activity, then the body will just store it. You don't really need anything more uh, than that. So give the body a reason to use those calories that you're eating, a uh, place to store, ideally in your lean body mass, your lean muscle tissue, and also training your your organs such as your pancreas, that it really doesn't need to secrete a lot of insulin. So you can increase your ability to process these different macronutrients, your protein, carbs, and fats, much more efficiently via exercise. So whether it's a walk or a run or weightlifting, anything you want to do, keeping that body in motion, just keep that body in motion. That's the biggest thing. Got one more bonus for you. Okay, surprise. The bonus is a free workout, nutrition, and game plan in the description below that you can use today. So I hope this helps, and I'll catch you in the next one.